Right there on time. Is. Right on time. How are you, man? I'm going to turn this up a little bit so I can hear you. There there we go. Dude, you, I think you set a record for the fastest to join me on this thing. I'm an early riser, so this was an easy one, man. This is late in my day already. Oh, where are you? I'm in California, Los Angeles. Oh, okay. I was How are you? Say, well, I'm doing great. It's 1.30 here, so I've been up for like, you know, five or six hours already. But how's things going with you? I can't complain, man. I, I got to tell you, you know, I mean, considering the strange times we're living in, um, uh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm, I think I'm really cut out for this quarantine stuff. I'm, I'm such a hermit that I've basically been in quarantine since 2017. So it's it's working pretty well for me. So what have you been doing in quarantine since 2017? And by the way, I think that's kind of a misnomer because I think I saw you on the Shine Down uh, Five Figure Death Punch tour, which was since then, I do believe. so. Well, I, I think it was right around that time. You know, it, it, after that tour, actually, um, we, we, we got off the road and uh, we immediately went right back into the studio and started writing songs. And we wrote some killer stuff, wrote and recorded some killer stuff. But then we all kind of looked at each other and said, man, we've been hitting this pretty hard for, for a few years solid. And we, we decided we needed to take a little bit of time off just to explore other things and do other things. And, and uh, it, it proved to be really an incredibly important time of all of our lives. So we basically took a couple of years and, and didn't do much 6 a.m. related. Um, I started a little record label. I'm always working with other bands, recording other artists and stuff. And DJ has a, a project going on. Of course, Nikki has always got a million things on his plate. And yeah. we've all been talking just recently quite a bit. And and I'm happy to say that I've never heard either one of them as happy as they are right now. So I think that it was a much needed break for all of us. Yeah, because uh, Nikki's off in uh, Wyoming, right? He is. The guy's like out fishing and just doing all this stuff out in nature. Stuff I never thought I'd he I'd see him do. In fact, you got to come out. You can start golfing together. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, so it's. Well, you know, I was gonna say, you know, it's so funny about that. So I like to have two acres where I live. I love my space and my peace and quiet. But I also love going to the concerts and being with people and stuff. But it's there's got to be that that separation for me, anyways. That's right. You've got to have that balance. And I think that that's what, you know, a lot of bands, I think, would agree with this. When you're in that tour record cycle where it's just year after year, you know, you 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 can see, you can look a year and a half down the road and know that you're going to be in a studio at a certain point. Yeah. You know, and that's it. And I got to say, that lifestyle is one of the coolest, most amazing, fun, awesome, unusual, weird lifestyles you can possibly have. But there's also something really, really important about just sitting in your backyard with your dog and listening to birds and, and, and thinking and, and literally taking time to remember some of the experiences that you've had. You know, so so really, and I can I can probably speak for both DJ and Nikki in the sense that I think that's what we've all been doing is just kind of dusting off the memories of experiences that we've had and, and trying to kind of you know, collect them all together and make a little bit more sense of our lives. And I, and I think that a lot of artists end up having to do that at some point. Some, some artists don't realize the importance of that and they burn out. And then yeah. others kind of, others do realize the importance of, it, importance of it and they go away for a bit. And then everyone's like wondering, is he okay? Is everything okay? And chances are, yeah, chances are things are actually great, you know? Well, it, it, you, you, know, you kind of hit on something. It's like uh, when, uh, when you go to a town like Detroit or whatever, you guys play here and the fans come out and see you, and then the next day they, they go back to their life. Well, you're going to do the same exact thing in another town. And that could go on for months and months and months. And it's like months you know, and like, months. Yeah. And like you say, you're not complaining about it, but it does get a little bit monotonous. And sometimes you got to step away and do other things. That's right. If, if you don't take the time off, then eventually you're just not going to be doing a good job at what you're supposed to be doing when you are in those situations. Yeah. You know? and, and so and I, I think that we all recognize that, thankfully. And um, and we've been talking a lot recently. Um, and I think all of us have the itch to, to kind of get back together and feel that chemistry again, you know, mm -hmm. because that's one thing that you do miss. You know, um, I, I love my, my private life and in and, and the non-studio life. Um, but I do miss that chemistry. It's, it's such an invigorating part of, of what I'm all about, you know, and I, I think I can say the same for both of my partners. Now, so uh, before you pack into 6 a.m. here, I wanted to ask you something. You said, you said something interesting. You said that you're, uh, you got your record label, you're, you're doing all this kind of stuff. What kind of stuff, what kind of advice would you give to bands that are looking to a break with record labels? Like, what do you look for? 
You know, that's a good question. And, and I think it's a very timely question because had you asked me this six months ago before the madness started, yeah, yeah. My, my answer would probably be a little bit different. Um, but I think now I would say to, to young artists and, 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 and bands that are trying to get started, understand that we are in a new reality now. So, so whatever you are expecting to have happen next it's not what was going to happen if this was two or three years ago. It is a new reality. And the, and the, the outlets that you're going to have to perform your music are going to be very different for the foreseeable future than what they would have been. And so, so realize that and make your decisions based on that. Because, you know, I have this young artist, Sigs, that's on my label, um, that we were just getting ready to get him out on tour and, 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 and start promoting his album right when, when, you know, COVID hit. And now he's having to rethink everything. And I'll be honest with you, there are times that these young artists must just sit there and go, I'm not sure this appeals to me anymore. I'm, I'm not, you know, I wanted to go out and play in clubs. I wanted to go play to 50 people in a sweaty, you know, bar somewhere and, 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 and just and figure out how to, to make this live show better. And now when their only options are Zoom performances or Instagram live performances, it changes the dynamic quite a bit. And I think yeah. it's going to end up changing the desire a lot. So I guess my advice would be just be very aware of what the next few years will look like and how different they will look than they probably would have if this was, you know, six months or a year ago and, and, and make your decisions based on that. And maybe keep some other options open too, because, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of people in this industry are really struggling right now. It's, it's, I mean, a lot of people in every industry, of course, are struggling right now. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's, yeah. Especially, you know, I talked about this before, but it's, it's, uh, it's not so, I mean, the bands are obviously, you know, taking a hit too, but it's, it's the people that work for them, the road crew guys, those guys are really doing, oh. you know, they're, they're really taking the brunt of this. It's, it's, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And, and, um, and yeah, and, and I think that they're good representatives uh, across the board. It's all of those hardworking people that work behind the scenes, whether it's music, whether it's films, whether it's finance, no matter what it is, there are so many integral people working behind the scenes. And those are the people that are being so dramatically affected by this because their entire their entire foundation has, has basically either come to a halt or has crumbled or is taking a completely new direction now. Um, it's, it's, it's really, it's really heartbreaking to, to watch this going on. And, and, you know, thankfully, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm less affected by it than, than a lot of people are. Um, but it, it, it's, it's nonetheless, it's, it's incredibly, uh, sad to, to see happen. So with this happening, with uh, Motley uh, uh, changing their tour to next year, how does that affect uh, your plans coming in the future for 6 a.m.? Well, 6 a.m. was already kind of on a hiatus. Um, and so um, it really doesn't affect us. We didn't have any tours set up at the time. So there, there, there wasn't like, it wasn't like a real dramatic impact to us. I think that... Um, it's, it's effect on us is probably going to be more positive than negative because we are all starting to talk again and we're all really getting the itch to get back in and, and create and, and try to figure out what's next. But as with all bands and as with everyone, that what's next is, is very unclear now. So I, the one thing that we do know is that we miss the chemistry that we, we have together. And I think that that's something we can do something about. We can all still get together and write and create and record new music. And, and I would imagine that that's probably going to happen sometime in the near future. But I got to admit that I got, I got to assume, I should say that uh, if you guys, let's say you wrote and recorded a new record this, this winter, well, Motley's going out on tour next year. So I guess that, that was my thing. It was like, so are, are you guys looking ahead two years? I, I'm not sure we're even looking ahead that far. Okay. I, I think that that our our focus right now would literally be solely on the creative side of it. You know okay. what what we what our souls need uh, at this point, and 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 then we'll kind of take it from there. You know, we've we've started to have some discussions, and and I'm sure that those discussions are going to continue. Um, so it's it's really hard to say. I I think that uh, you know for any band, even Motley. I mean, looking at next year one would hope that that things are going to be at least back to normal where those things can happen. But, but people are still sitting on the edge of their seats wondering, you know, yeah. and, and I think until we, until the industry as a whole gets a little more clarity 
um, it's really hard to say definitively what comes next. So, um, so you guys, obviously you released a single on Maybe It's Time, and I wanted to obviously ask you about that. But we were talking earlier about how everything gets cyclical when you're out on tour and that. And um, I know, I mean, I can count on many hands all my friends that have uh, fallen into substance abuse and are now clean and sober. And, it, and a lot in the, in the rock industry I'm talking about, because you do get in this this cyclical thing of every single day you're partying with different people and then you go to another city, you're partying with them and there's time to kill on the bus and the, and, and the whole thing. So, so I guess uh, just talk about the, uh, the latest single, maybe it's time. Well, it's, it's really been exciting for us. And uh, the, the song was originally released on our 2016 album prayers for the blessed. Um, uh, and that was just a 6am version of the song. And at the time we, we always knew that that's the message of that song was very important to us. I mean, as, as you know, all the way back to the Heroin Diaries soundtrack, we've we've dealt with this subject matter a lot, and it is very near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, and it seems like it's 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 a natural thing for Six AM to talk about and to, to address. Uh, but this song in particular just seems so much larger than than just the the, the album version that we did. So um, then along came the idea of this movie, and uh, the the just wonderful people at our record label and at management started kind of seeing the possibilities of, of, of teaming up and putting these things together and, and, and using some of 6am's music in the soundtrack to the movie. Well, then it just kind of became obvious that, that this song would really fit and would really um, help, uh, help bring that message forward. Um, so somebody got the idea. I'm not sure who, who it was. Maybe it was Nicky or maybe it was somebody at the label to, to do kind of a, a we are the world type of, you know, collaboration with some different artists because the, because the cause was such a good one. And it was just really exciting when all of these incredible artists started, you know, showing up, being willing to be a part of it. I think mainly because most of them, if not all of them, have personal experience with recovery and addiction themselves. And so it just became a really natural fit. And, and while, you know, anytime you, you, you challenge yourself with trying to get that many artists together to focus on one thing, it can really be a difficult situation. So the people behind the scenes, management and label really did a great job of, of bringing it all together and, and making it cohesive. So for me as an artist, it was actually a pretty easy process and it was just very flattering and, and honoring to, to, to have all of these great artists be willing to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, some of these guys, I mean, Brantley Gilbert, obviously, has kind of crossed over into rock a little bit. He did that, uh, you know, the, the Blue and Black song with Five Finger and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, Ivan and Tommy. Ivan's real open about his uh, battles with his uh, inner demons and stuff, too. So who uh, did, did you get a chance to physically work with these guys or were, were they all out doing their own thing? It was it was really a quarantine recording okay. process, to be <laughs> honest with you. Um, so and, and I think, you know, while while we knew all of them and we've we've, you know, been hanging out with them out on the road touring and stuff like that so there was already that kind of family feeling that that personal connection uh mm -hmm. with most of them um but the process to get this done was really each one of them went into their own recording studios recorded their parts and then and then we put it all together and kind of picked and choose what lines to use from which artists and that was the toughest part of it because all of these singers were so unique and just awesome in their own way that, that you just wanted to have each one of them have a, a, t a pass of the whole song, you know, <laughs> let's just release six different versions of the song, you know, each, so, but, um, so it was, it was challenging because of the quarantine, but, but, you know, we're all pretty used to doing that anyways, because with bands that tour as much as a lot of these bands do, you're having to jump into the studio, record some stuff, get back out on the road, go do some more shows, go to another city, jump into the studio again. So it wasn't that unusual, but it did present us challenges. Yeah. You know, I was just interviewing uh, Dave Ellison the other day, who, uh, who has become a friend of mine. And he told me, I don't know if you know this or not, but the first time he ever met Nikki was at that scene in the dirt where Nikki OD. Did you know that? No, that's yeah. amazing. He said that he was in the next room <laughs> wow. with a couple other guys. Uh, I think he said Fred Curry was there because Fred was drumming for Guns N' Roses at the time because Steven couldn't do it. And Fred's like, whoa, you guys got to get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, that is just crazy. It's a... Uh... I mean, just so many legendary moments that, that were, were brought to life in that movie. Yeah, and then he said that, uh, I guess that Nikki was actually part of the uh, reason that David, well, David's been sober for 30 years. 
And he said that, uh, I guess that Nikki came and visited them getting rehab, Dave and David. And this was all in my podcast. I'm not speaking out of school. But uh, sure. anyways, uh, he said that, uh, you know, Nikki showed up in his Ferrari ever looking like a million bucks. He was sober at the time. And Dave and David are in rehab, you know, just trying to, you know, they're all strung up, everything, trying to get back, get their lives back together. So it is a process. And I, I talked to so many of my friends and it, maybe you see this in, in, with your buddies. It's like when they go from drugs and alcohol, they're, they have such an addictive personality that something else takes over their addictiveness. Yeah, absolutely. It really does. And I think that for those that uh, that have the strength and, and the good fortune to, to make it through and to get to the recovery part of this, uh, there are just there are amazing things waiting on the other side. You know, and, and that's what I've seen time after time after time. Um, you you if you have the good fortune of, of knowing people in recovery, you um, you almost always get a sense that they are deeply aware of the fact that their life is so much better now. Mm. Um, and, and that's something that, that just continues to inspire all the time, you know, and that never goes away because, you know, the addiction never goes away. So, so th- the idea of being in recovery is this ongoing, very inspiring, very hopeful time of a, of a person's life. And, you know, yeah, I mean, to your point, in this industry, we we all know so many people that are dealing with it at, at at each certain stage. And as those stages progress, you see their lives just get better and better and better. Yeah, and plus, uh, sometimes they get more creative. And that's a big thing, too. Some of these guys are worried if they can create and, and write hit songs while they're sober. I've heard that a bunch of times as well. Uh, yeah, you hear about that a lot. And I think that, you know... As songwriters, we all kind of fear that writer's block. Um, And, you know, we're all looking for, you know, I I guess in the early stages, you're looking for for that magic button that you can push that can all that will all of a sudden just make your creativity explode. So you think that that's going to come from from drugs or from drinking or just from from being able to, to, you know, kind of separate yourself from your real life. And Mm -hmm. and then eventually you realize that, you know. To, 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 to have those raw nerve endings be more alert and aware from being sober, you're going to be much more in touch with real true feelings and you're going to be able to express them much more clearly and much more thoughtfully. And, you know, it's not to say that some of the, as we all know, some of the most amazing music from, from, from our growing up yeah. was just, was just mushroom induced or whatever it may be. <laughs> um, but I, I think that those those instances are much rarer than we think they are. You know, I, I, I don't think that I don't think that that you could rely on that as a inspirational resource. Yeah, I just uh, read Rob Helford's book and talked to him the other day. And uh, he was really into drugs and alcohol because uh, he fought a battle between being a, a gay man in the heavy metal industry. And that was like a real right. a real big uh, challenge uh, for him. So, it was, you know, he's been. I think he's been sober for over 30 years now. So, you know, if he can do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can, yeah, you can, you can see why somebody in that situation would feel the need for an escape, you know, of of some kind. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. Hey, real fast, since we're on this video chat here, what you got new ink? I haven't for a, this, this, this is my latest one. If found return to Los Angeles, that's, that's my latest one. (laughs) I've been kind of craving it again lately, but I, I'm I'm not sure with the quarantine that it's you know a good idea to go in and just have somebody digging into your skin. I just uh, I got this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the thing, but I, I'm celebrating my 25th anniversary here. At oh, Riff. dude, so that's um, fantastic. Wait, what's the what's the skyline up? Is that that's Detroit. killer? Yeah, that is awesome. I still got a couple more hours to go, and that's uh, Bob Tyrell did that. He does a lot of uh, rock stars and different things. And um, nice. And so uh, yeah, that took that took a while, but I, I got to go back and fill it in. But I thought since we were on this video thing that there might be something uh, you could show us. But I understand your I understand your feeling. <laughs> One of the last things I did was my back. I've got this huge like I don't know if you can see, it, but I got this huge tribal thing across oh, yeah, yeah. my whole back, and it was the most painful experience for some reason you know my arms and stuff were fine my chest was fine but my back was just terrible and so i remember like about six months after i got it uh i i went back into the artist that did it he's like man i gotta do some touch-ups on this this is starting to fade i'm like fuck that i'm gonna just get, i'm gonna get a sharpie every morning and i'll just darken it in myself 
<laughs> hey, a uh, final thing here for you, James, and we'll cut you loose. Uh, what did you do over the weekend? Was it your birthday? I had a great birthday. I just chilled with my dog and my girlfriend, and we just had an awesome time. I did nothing out of the ordinary. Just It was just another day, but I, I, I love my life so much right now that every day feels like a birthday. Well, that's cool. Well, uh, good for you. Well, congratulations on the latest single. Of course, uh, Snow Baby's the movie. And uh, 6 a.m., we'll, we'll have to see what happens, I guess. I guess it's all a, just a waiting game from here. It is. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time to, uh, to let me talk a little bit about this song and the, and the cause behind it. it. It's such an important cause, and I just really am so grateful that people are responding to it. It, it really means a lot to me. You know, like I said, it's like uh, I have so many friends in this business that um, fight the battle, and some fight it better than others. Uh, some have won easier than others. Uh, some continue to battle, and every day's a battle. Some are going on five years. So it, it is like the longer I'm in this business and the more friends I make in this business, the more people you see that have had that have fought this battle. And I'm lucky to be like kind of one of the people that I can kind of stop. I have a stop button. But a lot of people that I know, once the spigot comes on, it's on and it doesn't stop yeah. until they go to bed. <laughs> That's exactly right. And, and it's just it's just up to us to, to keep encouraging people to to, you know, to to find help, to seek help and to to make the steps, make the choices, take the steps to make their lives better. It is possible. Yeah. Well, James, happy belated birthday and thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.